Hey everyone, welcome to part two of our Tears of the Rotator Cuff series. And in this video, we're going to go over what a tear of the rotator cuff looks like on an MRI. MRI scans are great when it comes to evaluating a patient's shoulder pain when there is concern for a rotator cuff tear. An MRI is really good at looking at the soft tissue, the muscle, the tendon, the tendon attachment to bone, and really getting some good fine detail regarding the size of the tear, how much the tear is actually retracted, and other things that help a surgeon decide treatment for the patient. So there are a few goals of this video. The first is to understand what the normal rotator cuff looks like on an MRI. The second is to identify tendinopathy, which really can be thought of as perhaps just the age-related wear and tear of a tendon, and then go into small tears, like partial tears, and then the larger complete tears of the rotator cuff some of which will go over uh, showing retraction of the tendon from the bone. Okay, so to illustrate uh, on the model uh, some of these rotator cuff tears, uh, I'll get you oriented uh, here. So looking straight at uh, the model is, is the coronal image uh, of the MRI, and this is what we're gonna be using to uh, identify rotator cuff tears because it'll just be easy uh, to understand that way. And so to get a general idea of what we're gonna be looking at, if I pull this particular tendon, which just happens to be the subscapularis, um, here's the humeral head, there's the uh, socket right there, the glenoid. And if we just, the model does have some limitations here, but we'll go ahead and orient uh, everything so that it looks like it'll look uh, on the MRI. So just like that, we can see uh, right there is what the supraspinatus tendon uh, will look like on the MRI scan. And so um, I'll try to get my uh, pointer here to show you what that looks like. And then we will go from there. So here we go. So here is the supraspinatus tendon right here. And we can see we can follow it out all the way to the arm bone right here. And so where the rotator cuff attaches to the arm bone is called the uh, greater tuberosity. And so the greater tuberosity is this bone right here. And the rotator cuff starts off as a muscle belly, which is right here. And it travels underneath all this. We won't see this on the MRI necessarily just because of the way the image is, is uh, processed, but here's the muscle belly and that comes all the way over this way. And then this rotator cuff will attach uh, right to the arm bone just like that. And so we call the joint side of the rotator cuff the articular side, because it's on the joint side, the articular side, and then the outer side of the rotator cuff right up through here is called the bursal side. And so we will often describe tears using uh, those uh, terms, uh, really the articular side being a tear on this side and a bursal tear uh, being on this side. And so when the tear partially tears from this, we call this a partial tear, or if the tendon uh, totally tears from the bone like this, we'll start to see that on the MRI. So the tendon will often start on the bone and then it'll just kind of slowly start tearing off the bone and it will slowly retract over time away from the bone. And we can, we'll see that on the MRIs that we're about to go over. And in really bad tears, uh, this tendon will actually retract way into the shoulder uh, up against uh, or right next to the socket. Okay, everyone, we're gonna start off by going over uh, a normal rotator cuff on this MRI imaging. We're gonna stick with what we call the coronal images on the MRI because I think this is just the easiest way to understand it and to see what these tears look like. 
So starting at uh, starting looking at this uh, MRI scan, we can see uh, the humeral head right here, this uh, ball-shaped object. And as we scroll through the image, we can see the socket or the glenoid. And the rotator cuff muscle is right here. This gray area is the rotator cuff muscle. Uh, this is the supraspinatus. And if you follow it towards the outside of the shoulder, which is over here, we can follow it over the outside of the shoulder and you can see how that gray muscle turns into more dark, uh, a black tendon as it inserts right here onto the arm bone. And so that's a, a pretty normal looking rotator cuff. I wanna show you right where the, we'll zoom in a little bit, I wanna show you right where the um, tendon inserts onto the bone right here. We call that the footprint of the rotator cuff. And so this will be important to recognize as we start going through uh, types of rotator cuff tears. And so we'll cycle through this image a little bit. And you can see as we go through the image, which is taking slices through the shoulder, we can see how this uh, footprint uh, is maintained uh, through the whole image right here. And then again, right here. So I'm going to go to another example. We'll pull up this shoulder. So this is also another coronal MRI. And again, we can see the humeral head, or the ball part of the socket, and the glenoid, which is right here, uh, the uh, socket of the shoulder joint. Once again, we see the rotator cuff muscle here. And as we follow it out laterally, we can see how this muscle turns into more of a black substance, or a black color, I should say, which is the tendon and then insert right here onto the arm bone. And so I'll zoom in one more time and we'll try to get this centered up for you. And again, you can see here's the muscle and it extends laterally, turns into a tendon and attaches along the footprint of the humerus right here. And so again, we can cycle through this image and you can see if we sort of pick out the tendon insertion here, and as we go through the image, we can follow that tendon th throughout its attachment onto the arm bone. So here you go. So here's the muscle, tendon, attachment onto the arm bone. And as we go back through, here's the attachment again on the footprint. We can continue through. And you can see how that footprint is totally intact. In these next set of images, we're going to take a look at uh, rotator cuff tendinopathy, which is a disease of the rotator cuff tendon along the spectrum. So it really goes from tendinopathy to partial tearing to uh, complete tearing of the tendon. And so this is uh, a tendinopathy, predominantly a tendinopathy type of picture. So again, we can see uh, the humeral head and the uh, glenoid right here, the ball and socket. And here's the rotator cuff muscle of the supraspinatus. And we'll follow it out once again like we did uh, earlier. And we see how this tendon, instead of being this nice black looking structure here, it has a brighter appearance and there's these brighter, kind of these lines or these striations through the tendon. You can get the sense that there's some structure here uh, but the tendon itself uh, has some of those changes within it. And so as I scroll through, we can see how the tendon kind of has this thickened look to it. Um, you can again see the signal. Again, there looks like there's structure through it, but the tendon is thickened. There's this brighter appearance to it, and that is the tendinopathy uh, of the rotator cuff tendon. And so we can go through that image a few times. And you can really see right here, actually, muscle coming laterally. And here's some of the tendon structure. But again, you see this, this brighter appearance and these striations, these lines through the tendon, which su suggest that tendinopathy, that diseased rotator cuff tendon. And so I'll show you another example. Here is uh, another example of a uh, tendinopathy type of picture. And we'll come to about right here. Here's the humeral head. Here's the socket of the glenoid. And then the muscles in this area. And then again, we follow it lateral. It 
in some areas there's this black tendon structure, but within the tendon substance itself, we can see again the signal through here. And uh, again, that's the wear and tear of the tendinopathy. The, if you notice, the footprint is actually intact. Uh, we can zoom in on that a little bit and I'll center it up. And so we can follow the tendon all the way down and you can see where it attaches to the arm bone. So this, this attachment is actually intact, but there's this uh, disorganized wear and tear through the structure of the tendon itself. Um, here's another look at it. You can see black, healthier looking tendon, normal footprint attachment, and then the uh, diseased worn out tendon kind of on the, uh, with, within the substance of the tendon itself. So just a few cuts for you to take a look at there. And we'll move on to the next one. So in this next set of images, we're going to take a look at partial tears of the rotator cuff, uh, where the tendon is partially torn from the bone. And we'll start things off looking at this image here. So I'm actually gonna uh, switch the picture to this one. And we can see the humeral head and the socket. And here's our muscle, and it extends lateral to this black tendon here, and we can follow it all the way to the bone. So here's the footprint that we've mentioned before. I'll zoom in again a little bit, whoop, about right there. And then we can see the tendon coming all the way down and attaching to the footprint. Now if I go to a different part of the tendon, what we can see here is that the tendon extends to about here and then we have this bright white line and that's actually some tearing occurring within the tendon itself. And then one more image here, we can actually see again, here's the tendon, there's tearing within the tendon and actually some retraction of the tendon in this location and the rest of the tendon is down back on the footprint. So actually there's still some residual tendon fibers attaching right through here to bone still some residual tendon fibers right through here and then attaching to bone. But we can see how there's actually retraction of this area of the tendon uh, from this area of the tendon here. And then again, if we go to a, another area of the rotator cuff, the tendon's intact once again. And so there's the intact tendon, there's the tear, smaller tear, and then back to normal appearing tendon. And so we'll go to a second example. And on this example here, we've got the humeral head and we've got the socket again. And then here's our muscle and we can follow the tendon again all the way to its attachment onto the arm bone right here. And this helps get us oriented. And if I come to a different image right about here, we can see a really small tear from the bone. And so here's uh, the muscle, here's the tendon, here's the black tendon. You see how this black sort of fades away into this gray area. And then right here on the bone is this small tear. You can see this little triangular type structure there. So I'll zoom in a little bit more just to get a, bit, a little bit better closer look. We'll play with the, the image quality somewhat. And we can see here's the bone and here's the tendon coming to bone, and right in this small area, just a few millimeters in size, we're starting to get some tearing of this rotator cuff from the bone in this location. On another example, we've got uh, a bigger uh, tear of the rotator cuff, and so we'll come to this image, so we can see the tendon again coming to bone, and then right here, we can see how this part, this attachment is actually torn uh, of the footprint. And so we call this a, a partial articular side of tear because this is actually on the side facing the joint. And so um, articular is one way of uh, just saying the joint side. And so we'll follow the tendon down. It looks quite good here, nice uh, black color. And then right before it attaches the bone, you can see where it's pulled off just like a millimeter or so right here. So. It's actually torn along this spot of the footprint, and then this spot of the footprint is actually intact. If we go to some other images of this tear, we can see actually how this tear gets bigger. So this tendon is actually 
pulling apart in this location. And again, we go to another image and we can see how the tendon's pulling apart even further. It's getting a little bit bigger on the footprint. And then again, we can actually see how the tear has retracted up this way from its attachment on bone right here. And so it's actually uh, torn and retracted. I can measure this from the bone to the tear of about five millimeters or so in size. And that's what that looks like one more time. So you can just make out the small tear here. It's getting a little bit bigger as that tendon's pulling off a bone. Getting even bigger here as it's further pulling and tearing off a bone. And there's our measurement right there. I'll move that out the way. And then the tendon's kind of coming back. Uh, we're kind of getting out of the field of view of the tear again. So that's a good example of a partial articular sided tear. And then finally, we've got uh, what we call a bursal sided partial tear. So to get you oriented, so here's the attachment of the tendon. Here's our tendon coming in, attaching the bone. And the bursal side is actually the side away from the joint. So this is right on this side as opposed to over here, which is the articular side. And as we go through the image, we'll go this way through the image right about here. So we can see, here's the muscle belly of the rotator cuff. It's coming lateral, turning into the tendon, which is that nice black color. And then it attaches along the bone right here. We can see that same footprint. But if we look closely, we can see how this tendon comes down and it looks attached right here. But in this area right there, there's actually Part of the tendon that's torn and retracted. So this outer side of the footprint has torn and retracted up this way. So again, the articular side is intact, but the outer side of the tendon is actually torn and retracting up this way. In this next set of images, we're going to also take a look at an area of a partial tear, but a little bit worse than the ones that we saw before. Um, and there is a small area of a complete tear as well. And so we're getting a little bit bigger uh, of uh, tears as we go through these images. And so humeral head is right here. Here's the socket, the glenoid. And we get a good look at the muscle as it comes out lateral uh, to the, uh, the arm bone here. And so this is the tendon of the rotator cuff. Here's the arm bone. And as we follow the tendon down, we can see that there is attachment all the way across this area along the footprint, so that looks okay. And if we go through the image, again, we can see how the tendon looks right here. Everything's looking okay so far. And then as we go through the image a little bit further, we'll go from, let's start back here. So here's the tendon. And on this next image, what we see is the tendon coming in, and then we see disruption of the tendon fibers. So we can actually see how uh, the edge of the tendon is here, and the edge of the tendon is right through here, and we see retraction of this tissue. So we can actually see this white line, this or white area, where this tendon is torn, and it's actually uh, starting to retract uh, up this way. And you see just a little bit, maybe there's just a little bit of a few fibers of this tendon intact right through this area. So I'll zoom in on that a little bit more so it's easier to see. So here's some residual tendon fibers right here. Here's the main body of the tendon which is torn and it's retracted from its attachment down this way. Uh, we can go a little bit further and then you can actually see Here's what's left of the tendon, and then this is actually torn from the, the tendon right here. So this is torn from this location really to about this location. So uh, about seven and a half millimeters of retraction of that tendon tear. If we go back to this image here, we can measure this, and we have some retraction of this area. So that's about six millimeters of tendon retraction. Okay, moving along uh, in larger and larger tear sizes. Uh, on this image, we've got maybe a little bit larger tear uh, than we've had before. Uh, humeral head here, 
glenoid socket, rotator cuff muscle, and then the tendon as before. Attachment along the footprint is in this location. And so as we go through this image, here's the next image, we can start to get the hint that there's beginning of some disruption right through here. And then right here, we can actually see some of that tendon retracting from the bone with this tear. And so what we can see is here's the tendon, here's the arm bone, of course, and this tendon extends down to right here, but you can see where it stops. And so what's happened is this tendon is actually torn and retracted from the bone right here, and it's retracted about 5.9 millimeters. And so we'll get rid of that. And so we can see how, really how this uh, tear is uh, tearing and retracting uh, predominantly along the articular side. There's still a few fibers intact here on the bursal side of the tendon. And if we go a little bit more, we can actually see there's maybe just some residual tissue here, which is what this little blob is looking like. But we've got some tear and retraction of this tendon from the footprint here and the tendon's retracting off the bone, and there's just, just the tiniest little wisp of fibers right here. This is probably really just non-structural kind of tissue and not really the main part of the rotator cuff. So I think this is really just a full thickness tear of the rotator cuff tendon and retracting uh, away from its footprint, which is right here. So in this next set of images, we're going to get a little bit bigger in terms of tear size. Um, these are going to be a little bit bigger than the ones we saw before, maybe what we would call a medium type tear size. And uh, we'll go ahead and reorient, reorient you here. Uh, here's the humeral head and here's the socket. Again, here's the rotator cuff tendon. So again, it looks pretty normal in this, in this view, but as we begin to uh, move through the image of the MRI. I'll play with the image again. We can start to see some uh, white, uh, what we call signal here. And so here's the muscle coming out to the tendon laterally. And we can see now how the tendon stops right here. There's a gap. And then there's a little bit of tendon left right here. So this is actually a tear that has torn and retracted up into the shoulder some by about seven and a half or 7.7 .7 millimeters in size. So that looks like a complete tear with some retraction. Here's another view of it. Um, muscle, here's the tendon, and then here's the edge of the tendon, and here's where it needs to be attaching. And you can see again how this tendon is retracting even further and the gap is bigger between where the tendon currently is and where it actually needs to be. And so that's about 9.4 millimeters of retraction right there. And so as we go back through the image, we can start where it's intact. Moving back through the image, we can start to see, actually we can actually see some of the tendon being disrupted right here. And then as we move through the image, the tendon has torn, retracted in this area. Here's the gap. And then the gap has gotten even bigger as that tendon's retracted further. Got another example for you, a little bit bigger tear. Humeral head, glenoid, rotator cuff muscle, and then here's the tendon. And we can see a lot of wear and tear through this tendon now. Here's uh, more of an intact aspect of the tendon, this, uh, this black structure. And as we follow it towards where its footprint should be, right through here, we can see that there's all this brighter signal in this area. This is where that tendon needs to attach. And so this is right in this location is um, the, uh, the tear. So here's the edge of the tendon. And this actually needs to come down and attach right there. So that's about seven and a half millimeters of tearing. But it's not a total complete tear in this location because you can see there's still some residual tendon right there. And so on the joint side or the articular side, this part of the tendon has actually torn and retracted from right here. So the articular side is torn and retracted up this way. And then the outer surface of the tendon is still somewhat intact. So that's a really high grade partial articular side of tear, in that location at least. And as we go a little bit further through the image, what we can see is starting right here, there's still some tendon left. But as we go through, we start to lose that. We can see 
here's the tendon and it really kind of stops right here. We no longer see that sliver of tendon tissue. And when we get to about right here, we can see the edge of the tendon and it's just totally torn and retracted. It's over a centimeter retracted now at this point. Um, this is the deltoid muscle, so that's actually not the rotator cuff tendon. The rotator cuff comes right underneath it. And so the footprint is right through here. And as you can see, the tendon's way up this way. So this whole tendon needs to come back down to be re repaired in this location. So this is a complete uh, retracted tear of the rotator cuff. All right, so finally we're gonna go over some really big tears of the rotator cuff. We might call these large tears or we might call these massive rotator cuff tears. And these are really big tears where more than one of the four rotator cuff tendons are torn and, they're, and the tendon is retracted far away from the bone. And so let's start with this image here. Um, and again, we can see the humeral head and the glenoid. Here's the rotator cuff muscle. And if we follow it out like we've done on all the other images, we can see the tendon right here and then it just stops. Um, there's just a big gap where this tendon needs to go all the way over this way. And so for further anatomical orientation, this gray is the deltoid muscle, which is the outer muscle of the shoulder. And the rotator cuff needs to come right through here underneath it. And so this tendon is really retracted. It's retracted from this location all the way to here. So that's 3.3 centimeters of retraction of that tendon. So that's really retracted. And one location that we sort of use as a landmark is the glenoid or the socket. And so this tendon is actually torn and retracted all the way to the socket. So that's a really big tear. And if you'll notice, as I cycle through the images, we can still see the tendon on multiple images uh, where the tear is just torn really all over the, uh, or away from the arm bone. And so here's the tendon, again, it's retracted. It's not, it's not in this location, it's not attached to bone. And if we keep going back through, we don't really see m many images where this tendon is actually attached to the arm bone. And so here's a little bit of the tendon here, but again, it needs to come all the way back this way. And if we go back through the image, we can still see that the tendon is really nowhere near the bone. It's really torn and retracted pretty badly. So there you have it, guys. Hopefully in this video, we've been able to go over and teach all of y'all what rotator cuff pathology looks like on an MRI, everything from tendinopathy to smaller tears, partial tears, and even complete massive tears with retraction.